All right, this is part two of the video. Uh, now, most of you didn't see it, but on the first one, the phone rang during the middle of it, so this is the second take. Now, we're dealing with the scale. We have to figure out how I'm gonna draw this. And so I have three different forces here that I need to draw. And the question is, how big do I make them when I actually draw them? Because this is in Newtons, and when I draw it, I'm drawing in centimeters. And so one of the questions to ask is, well, what size is the paper? Well, this is the standard eight and a half by 11 piece of paper right here. And so if I'm doing that, well, I need to scale it somehow so that it doesn't go off the page. Now, recognize that it's not necessarily going to this angle, that uh, going you know, up and down or left and right, because I'm going at different angles right here. So, and it also matters about, am I drawing my vectors like on a piece of paper like this or like this? Now, it's not particularly easy on a blank piece of paper like this. Graph paper works a whole lot better, in my opinion. It's easier to get my zero degree angle. That will become a little bit more obvious when we do the, the later video of actually adding them. And so, now I've got my, I need to figure out the scale. Now, when I'm coming up with a scale, I'm going to come up with something like one centimeter equals some magnitude of force. Now, I could start out with one Newton, but the trouble with this one, this is legitimate, in which case this would be 0.98 centimeters, this would be 1.47 centimeters, and 1.96 centimeters, that's what I'd write over here. But that is incredibly tiny. A centimeter is, well, actually, that particular, that size of my thumb right there uh, is a little more than three centimeters long. If I'm drawing this, this is incredibly tiny. You're cramming it all into a tiny little space. You're not going to get a particularly accurate drawing. I've seen students try to do that. It really doesn't work particularly well. And so using this scale is not particularly effective. So I could go one centimeter equals 0.1 newtons, in which case this is 9.8 centimeters, 1.47 centimeters, and 1.96, uh, sorry, try that one again. 9.8 centimeters, 14.7 centimeters, and 19.6 centimeters. We'll talk about how to get that in just a second. And that might actually be appropriate for this. You're going to have to, sometimes you set up a scale, you start drawing it out, you end up off the paper, and then the, your two choices are, well, I can do a different starting point and make it fit, or I just come up with a different scale. And sometimes you have to redo it. Unfortunate, but true. So I've got my three forces right here. Now, I have the advantage of having a whiteboard here behind me. I'm going to go to a, a bigger scale than what's here. And so, see if I double that size right there, I could go 0 0.05 Newtons. This will end up being 19.6 centimeters uh, and, and so on. And 19.6 centimeters, a foot is about 30 centimeters. I probably could go a little bit higher than that. So. I'm going to go 0.03. Now it's almost arbitrary, especially when I have a nice big huge board right here. As long as I'm staying on the screen, I might end up redoing this, but we'll just see what happens. Now, in order to figure out the length drawn, I've got two different techniques. I've got the proportion technique and then I have the unit conversion technique. So first, the, the proportion technique is I start with 0 0.98 newtons is to some number of centimeters. And that's equal to 0 0.03 newtons over one centimeter. And so when I'm doing this conversion, well, it's cross multiplication. I have two fractions equal to each other. So I multiply the diagonals I know and divide by what's left over. And so I pull out my handy dandy calculator and I do 0.98 times one and then divide by 0 0.03. And I end up with 32.67 centimeters. Now, because I crammed it all into the small space here, I've got to do some erasing, but I'm going to show you one other technique to, to get the exact same answer. So 32, I'm just going to round off 32.7 centimeters. Oh, I don't want to repeat the units there because I already have them up here in parentheses, so let me get rid of that. All right. Now for the next one, I'm going to do a different technique of figuring this out. I'm going to do what's the unit conversion aspect of it. 
So I take 1.47 newtons, that's what I want to convert to centimeters, and I multiply by my scale factor. Now technically it's not a conversion because this is not always true. This is only true for this one case of my adding vectors. But I can treat it as such. I want to get rid of newtons, so I multiply by point, I put 0.03 newtons on the bottom here because I, I want the same unit on top and bottom so they cancel out. And then one centimeter. If they are equal, that means if I divide one by the other, it, the fraction is equal to one. Anything divided by itself is equal to one. So I take my number and I'm multiplying by this fraction equal to one. And in essence, I have 1.47 newtons times one divided by one times 0.03 newtons. My newtons cancel out, it is common on top and bottom. I'm left with centimeters, which is what I want. And so I end up with 1.47 divided by 0.03, which happens to be 32.7, uh, no, sorry, wrong problem. So 1.47, pull out the calculator, 0.03 divided by, and I get 49 exactly. So 1.47 into 0.03 divided by 49. So 49. Now again, I'm going to erase this. So I have room to write 49.0. And then for the last one, I have 30 centimeters, so 1.96, I'm uh, sorry, 1.96 newtons, 0.03 divided by, and I get 65.3 centimeters. I did it using, well, in both cases, I ended up dividing this by 0.03, because that's equal to one. If that weren't one, it couldn't be as simple as this divided by 0.03. And so now, this is, these are the lengths that I'm gonna be drawing my vectors in these directions. And so I'm going to end this particular video. In the next one, I'm going to draw them so that they have a common tail, which is part of the lab. I know for some of you, I went straight into the addition of it. But if you read the lab, you start out with drawing them all with the same tail. And uh, so I need some room. So tune into the next part.